The helicopter was gone, but Janine's heart raced with terror. Her eyes darted to the tree line, where sinister shadows danced amidst the gnarled branches. But what caught her attention, lurking amidst the darkness, was an unholy abomination, an undead horror, a ravenous zombie. Its decrepit form surged towards her with grotesque speed, arms outstretched in a perverse mockery of life. Yet, as she quickly walked past, its sluggish movements rendered it an insignificant threat, left in her wake within seconds. However, the treacherous woods held more nightmares in their grasp. Like vengeful phantoms, two more zombies lunged at her. Bracing herself, Janine thrust her spear with savage force, piercing the flesh of one while unleashing a mighty shove against the other. Her primal instincts propelled her forward, deeper into the twisted thicket of ancient Kentucky trees. The forest teemed with shuffling dead, an undead army bent on her destruction, but she dared not engage them, for their sheer numbers threatened to envelop her, suffocating the last breath of hope. With desperate determination, Janine bulldozed through their rotten ranks, shoving them aside like discarded puppets. She adopted a crouched posture, moving stealthily, a predator navigating the shadows. Every rustle of leaves or brittle snap of a branch elicited a rush of adrenaline, for she knew that discovery would see her doom. Her sole purpose was to flee the accursed farmhouse, where the thunderous whir of the helicopter's rotors had unwittingly lured them all. After what seemed like an eternity, a glimmer of salvation revealed itself. A road cutting through the dense tapestry of foliage, Janine's eyes widened with a mix of apprehension and hope. Was it the legendary Dixie Highway? Crossing to the other side, she plunged into the labyrinth of trees once more, seeking solace on this desolate path. As she trudged along the narrow trail, the haunting moans of the undead slowly faded into a distant chorus. No longer accosted, Janine halted, her weary body yearning for rest. Gazing around, her keen eyes scanned the surroundings, searching for sustenance. Berries, hidden gems of nourishment, caught her attention, and she decided to indulge, providing her a brief relief from the horrors that pursued her. Resuming her journey, she elected to follow the unassuming country road, never straying too far from the protective embrace of the forest's edge. Her vigilance heightened. She scavenged for additional berries, her survival instincts honed to razor-sharp precision. Through the Finding path, Janine ventured until it led her to a place that exuded a peculiar sense of foreboding. A towering radio tower ensconced within an imposing fence. The dying embers of sunlight painted a macabre tableau as she peered through the windows of a small building within the compound. There, within the eerie confines, the undead prowled with languid malice. With a calculated ruse, she lured them out, one by one, eradicating their abominable existence with ruthless efficiency. Unsatisfied, she moved on to the next structure, a gnawing hunger for survival fueling her unyielding resolve. Two more zombies fell beneath her wrath, their lifeless bodies crumbling before her. Yet the rewards proved meager, for the buildings revealed little of value. The central mechanical structure within the compound, though conspicuous, harbored no festering monstrosities. Its sterile interior held no treasures worth recounting, no secrets to unveil. Braving the encroaching darkness, Janine prepared to press onward, but fatigue began to gnaw at her spirit. The hour was late, the night draped in impenetrable blackness. Sensing the encroaching peril, she made a choice. Retreating to the safety of one of the modest buildings within the fenced perimeter, exhausted and worn, she bathed her tattered garments and warm flesh in the meager trickle of a water dispenser. The stench of decay washed away, and she cleansed her bandages with meticulous care, briefly savoring a handful of berries, a tiny feast for a soul teetering on the precipice of oblivion. She gathered her remaining strength to seek refuge in the other building, far removed from the entrance to the forbidding enclosure. There, on the unforgiving floor, she succumbed to the embrace of restless sleep, the witching hour inching closer, its veil of darkness casting its sinister spell upon the land. With a heavy heart, Janine roused from her uneasy slumber, her mind clouded with haunting visions of the horrors that surrounded her. The oppressive weight of her circumstances fueled her determination, urging her to depart from the compound and put even more distance between herself and the accursed farmhouse. An insatiable hunger gnawed at her insides as she delved deeper into the unforgiving forest scavenging for any semblance of sustenance. In her search, she stumbled upon a weathered shipping container, its contents nothing more than crates of wooden planks. A bitter disappointment. Undeterred, 
Janine pressed on, her weary feet carrying her to a small clearing where a solitary cabin stood sentinel, nestled beside a forlorn well. An air of eerie stillness enveloped the scene, beckoning her to investigate. Cautiously, she peered through the window, her eyes darting across the dimly lit interior, detecting no trace of the undead. However, the moment she dared to swing open the creaking door, two ravenous zombies lunged forth, their decomposing hands reaching out for her fragile flesh. Summoning her resolve, she fought back, forcefully shoving them to the ground and extinguishing their pitiful existence beneath her relentless stomps. Unfazed by the chaos that had unfolded, Janine cast her eyes upon the cabin's interior, a glimmer of hope kindling within her heart. Her gaze fell upon an old iron stove its blackened surface a testament to the resilience against the harsh winters. A small bed nestled in the corner, offering a semblance of comfort in this desolate realm. Meager shelves held the promise of meager supplies, while a modest pantry housed a few crates and another shelf. Yet, it was the sight of a couple of radios perched upon the lone table that captured her attention. A fleeting reminder of the world that had crumbled into chaos. Stepping outside, Janine tore the tattered clothing from the lifeless corpses of the zombies, reducing them to rags. She meticulously cleansed these newfound fabric scraps in the water from the well, grateful for the boundless source of fresh and untainted sustenance. Taking advantage of the rare opportunity, she also cleansed her own worn garments and her weary body, relishing the invigorating sensation that washed away the grime of survival. The well became her lifeline as she replenished her cooking pots and water bottle, securing the essential elixir of life. With determined hands, she gathered kindling, fueling the wood stove even as the sun descended beneath the horizon, casting the land into an inky abyss. In a display of indomitable strength, Janine moved the lifeless corpses of her fallen foes away from the cabin, their weight no longer an insurmountable obstacle. She carried them with ease. Nourishing her body with a handful of berries, she sought refuge within the cabin. It's bad a cold and uncomfortable interlude, albeit a temporary one. When daylight finally broke through the tenebrous canopy, the tendrils of pain gripped Janine's neck. The bed wasn't as soft as it looked. Determinedly, she changed the bandage mustering the resilience necessary to face another day in this forsaken world. However, foraging proved futile in the Cloak of Darkness, forcing her to shift her focus elsewhere. Her restless hands toyed with the lifeless radios on the table, their silent voices a stark reminder of a bygone era. Their lack of power rendered them useless, more relics of a time consumed by chaos. Assessing her dwindling supplies, Janine felt a pang of anxiety. Her gear hung loose upon her emaciated frame, evidence of her rapid weight loss in this struggle for survival. Her senses heightened. She scoured the surroundings for any signs of sustenance. Amidst her search, she stumbled upon a small satchel, devoid of contents. Unperturbed, she placed it upon a shelf within the cabin, its emptiness serving as a stark reminder of her own solitude. As if compelled by a subconscious desire to fill the void, she absentmindedly tucked a pen inside, a futile gesture to occupy her restless mind. With diligent resolve, Janine tended to the wood stove, adding kindling to ensure the crackling flames would eventually dance with warmth. Yet, the ceaseless hours in the confines of the cabin wore upon her spirit, monotony gnawing at her sanity. Shedding her outer layers of clothing, she tended to her wounds, her leg receiving a fresh bandage. Faced with the all-consuming tedium, she resolved to challenge her physical limitations. Each push-up, each burpee, became a battle cry against the encroaching darkness, a testament to her unyielding will. The arduous exercise routine consumed her until the late hours of the night, her aching body seeking rest within the familiar embrace of the bed. As the morning light cast its timid rays upon the cabin, Janine emerged from her restless slumber, greeted by a dull ache pulsating through her neck. The cycle repeated, her weary hands diligently changing the bandage, a steadfast ritual to stave off infection. Hunger gnawed at her core. Frustration tinged her thoughts as she retraced her steps. The imminent threat of starvation loomed, urging her to scour the immediate vicinity for any sliver of sustenance. Yet the weight of boredom pressed upon her shoulders. The eerie silence punctuated only by the sound of her breath, the creaking of the trees. Determined to defy the monotony, she shed her layers of clothing, exposing her battle-worn physique. With measured determination, she embarked upon a rigorous exercise routine, honing her strength and fortitude in the face of despair. 
The shadows danced around her as she pushed her limits. This became a routine for Janine, scouring the area around the cabin for useful items and berries, consuming the berries and improving the cabin's surroundings with what she found. Every evening, she would push herself physically, engaging in rigorous exercise to better prepare herself for the next encounter with the undead. She made a point to bathe herself and clean her clothing and equipment at the well, ensuring the bandage on her deep leg wound remained as clean as possible. Janine discovered that she could sterilize her rags using boiling water, which helped keep the infected wound under control. One day, while out foraging, she stumbled upon a small plush toy half buried under a tree, a worn and tattered Molly the Mole. With care, she brushed off the dirt and set Molly on the edge of her bed in the cabin. She smiled and told Molly that she would keep him safe as best she could. As she conversed with the stuffed animal, a thought crossed her mind. Perhaps she was going crazy, but with nobody else around to judge her, she decided it didn't matter. Talking to Molly became a small comfort, a flicker of companionship in this desolate world. Over time, the piles of useful things around the cabin grew. Janine stumbled upon some rose hips while foraging one evening, and she was inspired to create a simple hot tea using the spice. The taste brought delight to her tongue, finally offering a break from the monotony of berries. Following her nightly exercise, she found a pair of scissors and trimmed her hair, though the task proved challenging without a mirror. Nonetheless, she was content with her new hairstyle, reveling in the taste of rosehip tea. As she crawled into bed, she bid Molly good night, finding solace in his silent presence. Day after day went by, and the routine stayed much the same. Janine continued her exploration, venturing further from the cabin. One day, she crossed the neighboring field dotted with hay bales and stumbled upon a road with a wrecked station wagon. The vehicle was badly damaged, denying her access to its interior. Undeterred, she pressed on, moving along the road until she came across a single home with a garage and a shed. The former inhabitants, now undead zombies, shambled toward Janine, but she easily dispatched them. She methodically searched the shelves, collecting useful tools and items, packing them away in her hiking backpack. Eliminating every undead presence and scouring every shelf, she soon realized it was too late to risk traveling back to the cabin. The bed in the home looked far softer than her own, so she laid down to rest for a couple of hours. When she awoke, she spent a bit of time rummaging through the home before setting off back to the cabin at dawn. Upon her return to the cabin, she organized all her new items taking stock of her expanding arsenal. The days passed, but Janine couldn't shake the nagging curiosity of what else lay beyond the fields and roads. She longed to explore and discover anything that could aid in her survival. Before long, her feet carried her back towards the area where she had found the home, but this time she ventured in the opposite direction, up the road. To her surprise, she stumbled upon what appeared to be a small army training facility. The barracks-style rooms held lockers with a variety of camouflage clothing, and the rooms themselves housed only a few zombie residents. Another building contained a restroom, shower area, and a small dining facility. Janine explored it all, gathering anything useful she could carry and dispatching the undead one by one. Laden with her newfound loot, she walked down the road to the small home and rested there for a couple of hours in the soft bed before heading back to the cabin in the woods come morning. Excitement coursed through her as she unpacked everything and showed Molly her latest finds before falling back into her familiar routine. As time passed, boredom began to creep into Janine's mind once again, urging her to venture beyond her usual boundaries. She found herself completely compelled to explore the surrounding area once more. So she gathered all her equipment, shouldered her hiking bag, and headed out towards the house along the road. This time, she continued past its fence line, venturing farther down the road until she came upon a couple of warehouses. To her disappointment, there were no undead in sight, and the only useful items seemed to be a couple of packages of seeds and some gardening supplies. The rest of the food in the crates had all rotted away months ago. She was about to give up and head back to the cabin when curiosity tugged at her. She decided to explore the other side of the warehouses, and it proved to be a wise choice. A short distance up the road behind the warehouses, she spotted a couple of zombies shuffling about near an impressive sports car. The car sat on a jack in the middle of a tire change. Janine approached cautiously, eliminating the zombies one by one. As she searched their bodies, she located the car key on the first zombie. Surveying the scene, she noticed everything she needed to replace the tire lay on the ground near the car. It became evident that the airborne zombie virus had infected the driver and passenger in the middle of their tire repair. How fortunate for Janine. With a surge of excitement, she climbed into the car, turned the ignition key, 
and the engine roared to life. She swiftly finished putting on the new tire, then settled into the driver's seat. It was just getting dark out when she turned the wheel and steered the car down the middle of the road, cranking up the car's heater. She drove down the dark country road, wondering what lay ahead in this new chapter of her survival.